Hello guys, dwellers of the universe. Welcome to Jagat Raya News, World of Politics Online Portal. It's informative and sensational. Let's see what World of Politics teaches us. Please subscribe, like, share and comment. No doubt it's for you. Yes, it's for you guys. Mahatma Gandhi, an Indian nationalist leader, Pure Hearted Man, Less Men See, Part 1. He once said, let's follow the path of truth and spread the message of the father of the nation. Mahatma Gandhi arrives in UK in 1931. What message has he brought to the world and what leaders could learn from it? If only our leaders would learn from Gandhi, whose ashes were brought to Malaya. Free Malaysia Today, E. October 7, 2020. The International Day of Nonviolence camp and went with United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres calling for a global cessation of violence and strife. But I wonder how many Malaysians were even aware of this. The International Day of Nonviolence honors the birth of Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi on October 2nd. I'm sure every Malaysian has heard of the man who was named number two in Times Person of the Century list in 1999. Albert Einstein took the top spot, by the way. Guterres said, among other things, that the day was a timely reminder to strive to uphold the values Gandhi lived by, the promotion of dignity, equal protection for all, and communities living together in peace. He said a ceasefire was more important now because we were all facing a common enemy, the COVID-19 virus, which needed a united effort. He also spoke out against hate speech calling on people not to indulge in head speech, whether online or offline, adding that the UN had launched two initiatives to address this. A total of 21 foreign envoys to the UN, including from Indonesia, Oman, Australia, Lebanon, Egypt and Brazil, spoke at function on the relevance of Gandhi to the world. Kathy Raisin said, I am uncertain as to how many Malaysians are aware that some of the ashes of Mahatma Gandhi, who was shot dead by an assassin on January 30th, 1948, were brought to the Dan Malaya and put on exhibit to that Malayans could also mourn the passing of a giant among men. The ashes were flown in an urn from Delhi to Singapore and taken to Kuala Lumpur, Kota Baru, Penang and Ipoh, where they were placed for people to see and pay their respect, before being flown back to Singapore, where they were immersed in a sea about two miles off Connaught Drive on March 27, 1948. The ashes were taken in a marine place, petrol boat and Indian government's representative in Malaya. John Kyrie mixed with the ashes with water from the Ganges River before immersing the urn in the sea. He was accompanied by about 100 people in 20 private lunches. A Royal Singapore Flying Club aircraft flew low and dropped pearls petals. On the shore stood tens of thousands of people of all races and religions offering prayers and saying their last farewells, for this was no ordinary man who had died. Among those who had much earlier paid their respects at the Victoria Memorial Hall, where the urn had been placed, was the British Governor Sir Franklin Kingsley. Four weeks after that, prayer meetings and functions were held in Malayans at Committee Hall, temples, churches and mosques. At the integral meeting of the then Salango Council of State, Maitri Basar Hamza Abdullah said his death was caused great pain to the Indian people and so all over the world. Which was true as prayers and gatherings were held not only in most towns in Malaya, but also in many parts of the world. 
President Stephenson had something to say about the Mahatma, a great soul. In fact, the governments of followers of the Mahatma in several nations requested for some of the ashes of Gandhi, which they then immerse in the waters in or around the countries. In Burma, now Myanmar, for instance, then Prime Minister Sakin Nu, also known as Nu U Nu, immersed the ashes at a tree river junction near Rangoon on March 22. To understand the immense influence of Mahatma Gandhi, one has only to know that more than 100 nations have issued stamps in memory of him, named certain buildings or places after him and built or placed statues of him in prominent squares. That's the end of part one, Mahatma Gandhi, the Indian nationalist leader. Part two will follow shortly. Be patient and have a good day.